guys, it's Lizzie. Today I'm going to be reviewing a book for you, and that is Petals on the Wind by B.C. Andrews. Now this is the second book in the Dollangers series, I believe. I believe that's the name of the series. This is the second book in the Dollangers series, I believe is the name of it. And this picks up where Flowers in the Attic left off, so I do have a full book talk about that. If you want to check that out, I will link it on the screen, as well as down below. Um, but if you do not want to be spoiled for that book, I would not stay around for this. But I will let you know that I gave this book 2.5 out of 5 stars and won't be continuing the series. So there's that if you would like to know. If you want to stick around and hear the rest of my review, feel free. And if you don't want to be spoiled, I totally understand. Now, this book picks up, as I said, where Flowers in the Attic left off. So this begins with Carrie and Kathy and Chris all on the train, or all on the bus, trying to leave Foxfeld? Foxfield? Foxhall? So they're all trying to leave Foxworth Hall, they're trying to escape since they figured out that their mom uh, was trying to poison them, and Kathy and Chris have decided they're going to take Carrie and go to Florida and become trapeze artists and just kind of go with the circus. Um, but Carrie starts getting really sick from all the arsenic, and so a lady on the bus tells them to come with her and she'll take them to her doctor's son. Uh, who will be able to help Carrie. Now, Paul, the doctor, who actually is the man that Henny, the woman on the bus, uh, works for, he ends up falling in love with the kids and wanting to adopt them. So he asks the kids if they will tell him the whole story, and they do, and so he basically says that they're going to have to petition the mother for him to be able to adopt them. And they petition the mom, and she never shows them. So they are legally adopted by Paul, and he ends up sending Chris to like a pre-college school, since he's technically too old for high school. He puts Kathy into high school, and he sends Carrie to a boarding school where they said that they're going to help her since she's smaller than most children, and she's a little bit disproportionate because of the lack of sunshine and fresh air and all of that when she was getting older. So you start to follow their stories, but there are so many after that point. You see Kathy trying to become a ballerina, and you see Chris going to college, and you see all the after effects that it's having with Carrie, and there's like 10 years in this one book. So there's so many stories that happen that you kind of just get a little confused and a little lost. And there were points where I was still thinking Kathy was like 17 and I found out that she was 25 and it just got very abridged it felt like. And while Carrie has the excuse of she's becoming an actual like teenager and an adult, the changes that Kathy goes through in this 10 year period make it so she's not the same character to me that she was in the first book. I really liked Kathy as a character in the first book, and this made me really despise her. Her whole focus shifts to wanting to blackmail and get revenge on her mother, while also being in love with like four different guys, and or no, three guys, one of which is still Chris. Like, her and Chris still have this relationship going on. She also starts having a relationship with Paul, and then there's this other character, Julian, that gets introduced, who she has this relationship, and it, Kathy just gets so wrapped up in whatever's happening in that moment. So like, at one point she's engaged to Paul, and then you turn the next page and she's marrying Julian, but also still in love with Chris, and Chris is like, you're the only one ever for me. And so it just got very confusing very fast, and just lacked the story that I liked in the first one. So it didn't make me enjoy the book as much as I did Flowers in the Attic. And when I finished, or when I was actually probably like halfway through, I was just like, I just want this to be done. The other thing that I really didn't like was it was broken up into parts, but within each part there's just bolded like titles on some of the pages. 
but they're not like always at the top or always on one side. It's just like randomly bolded and that's supposed to be a new chapter. And I would have rather just had actual chapters um, instead of like having two pages of story and then a new bolded title and being like, okay, this is a different point. So because of all of that, I've decided I'm not gonna continue with the rest of the series. I do have the other three books, um, which are If There Be Thorns, Seeds of Yesterday, and then the technical prequel, um, Garden of Shadows. And I'm just not gonna pick up any of them because I have other books I wanna read and better things I'd rather spend my time on than pushing myself through three books that I don't feel the need or want to read anymore. So I thought this was gonna be a series that I was gonna fly through and I was gonna really like. And I liked the first one, I gave it four out of five stars. But with only giving this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars, it doesn't make me want to pick up the next one. Um, so I won't be. But if you have read Flowers in the Attic, Petals on the Wind, or any of the other three, and you want to let me know what you thought of them down in the comments, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, make sure to click that thumbs up button because it lets me know you enjoyed it. And if you would like to see other videos that I put up or the other books that I choose to read in the future, by clicking that subscribe button, you'll get all five videos I upload a week, usually one Monday through Friday, and they will all be in your subscription box, and then I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!